Hey YouTube, it's Tyler the Antenna Man. Today I'm going to test out and review the Channel Master Stealth Tenna. It's a $30 basic small directional outdoor TV antenna that claims reliable reception within 50 miles of the broadcast towers. Before I get into the review, if you are seeing me for the first time, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I've been an over-the-air antenna enthusiast since I was five years old and I'm constantly updating my YouTube channel with antenna reviews, reception tips, and cord cutting as a whole, including updates on ATSC 3.0, the new television standard that will totally change over-the-air TV. So if you're seeing me for the first time, make sure you hit that subscribe button. The Channel Master Stealth Tenna runs for only about $30 online, making it a very affordable small directional antenna for people that have moderate to strong signals. Looking at this antenna, the design is pretty basic. It has the VHF element for high VHF stations and then some UHF elements here. What am I talking about with VHF and UHF? VHF TV stations broadcast on channels 2 through 13 and typically require a longer antenna element in order to be reliably picked up, which this element is for high VHF, not low VHF, but high VHF. And then UHF TV stations broadcast on channels 14 and above and typically require smaller antenna elements, such as these little elements up here. And it's important to note that most TV stations do not broadcast on the channel number you may know them as. So, for example, if you have a CBS 7 in your area, they may not broadcast on the VHF band. To find out what channels your local TV stations are broadcasting on, go to antennaweb.org, type in your address, and look for the RF channel number. The virtual channel is a channel that the station identifies as, so in my market, NBC 28 WBRE. But the RF channel is the channel that they broadcast on. Now, if you see some local TV stations missing or no channels listed at all on antennaweb.org, don't freak out. The website tends to overestimate the amount of channels a person can receive with an antenna. In fact, at my location, it says I shouldn't get in WNEP or Fox 56, but they are the strongest signals. They can even be picked up with a very small antenna. You can also use the FCC DTV maps or rabbitears.info as a second resource to see what TV stations are available in your area. I attached a link to both of them in the description of my video. I'm now going to test out this antenna in the same location I've tested out various other outdoor TV antennas. Most of the TV stations I'll be testing out are about 45 miles away, both on the VHF and UHF band. Here's a list of the stations along with their RF channels and their signal strengths on the last two antennas I tested out on my YouTube channel. On the left side, you'll see the type of diffraction on the TV station. One edge means single edge diffraction or one ridge between me and the transmitter weakening the signal. Two edge means two edge diffraction or two ridges weakening the signal between me and the transmitter. LOS means line of sight with virtually no obstructions in the way. You can also see the results of various other outdoor antenna models by checking out my other videos. The signal strength on WNEP, which broadcasts on UHF channel 50, was about the same as that junk antenna I tell people not to buy. A tiny bit higher, but overall about the same. The signal strength on WYOU, which broadcasts on VHF channel 13, was a tiny bit higher on this antenna compared to that other antenna I tell people not to buy. There was not any picture breakup on this channel compared to the junk antenna I tell people not to buy. The signal strength on WBRE, which broadcasts on VHF channel 11, was significantly higher with this antenna compared to the last two antennas I tested out. The signal strength on Fox 56, which broadcasts on UHF channel 22, was a little bit higher on this antenna compared to the junk antenna and the omnidirectional antenna. This antenna was able to pick up Fox 29's repeater station just barely. There was a lot of breakup and the no signal message, but on the last two antennas, I was not even able to get a trace of the station. This antenna was not able to pick up WNJB's low-powered repeater station. Overall, this antenna performed exactly as I expected it to. 
average on the UHF and VHF band. It is a $30 basic small directional outdoor antenna, so it's not going to blow every other antenna out of the park. It's just not a large antenna. I'd say it would work pretty well for people that live within 40 miles of the broadcast tower with moderate to strong signals. And it'll work better than this antenna because it will last longer. You can see this antenna here is already missing some elements from me slamming it on the ground a few times. Which antenna do you think would win in a fight? This ping bing ding van sky model or the Channel Master Stealth Tenna, one that's made mostly of plastic or one that's made of all metal. Put your wagers in and we'll find out in just a second. All right, bets are on. Let's go see who wins. We have a winner. Now, some of you are probably saying, oh, Tyler, wait a second. This antenna is damaged a bit too. It's just as junk as the other antenna. Not exactly. The element did bend a tiny bit, but it did not break off. You could simply bend it back into place and then it's just as good as new. You can see the elements aren't moving around compared to this antenna where the elements are strictly broken off and there's no putting them back on. Now, before I get sued by the state of Pennsylvania for illegal sports betting, let me get back to my main point. This antenna works good as a very basic small directional outdoor TV antenna, usually within 40 miles of the broadcast tower without too much obstruction in between. It's only $30 and small in size, so it's not going to work as well as a very large antenna. If you have a very large antenna, don't think, oh, this antenna works very well. I'm going to get rid of my large antenna and replace it with a small antenna. Why doesn't the small antenna work as well as a large antenna? Because it's not as large. However, if you are using a junky flat antenna that I tell people not to buy, but they buy them anyway, if you purchase this antenna and mount it outside, it will make a world of difference in terms of your TV reception. Thanks again for watching my YouTube channel. If you're on Facebook, like my Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash antenna man PA. If you are not on Facebook and would like to receive email updates on when I post new videos, I attach a link in the description of this video to my email list if you would like to sign up. At some point, I will be making a video of me smashing what's left of this antenna with a hammer, so you don't want to miss that. Thanks again for watching and have an awesome day.